We've all heard our fair share of conspiracy theories. Some are innocent, like the one claiming Elvis is still alive, while others are sinister, like the one claiming 9-11 was orchestrated by the US government. It's easy to dismiss such theories as nothing more than ramblings of crazy people. But don't be so hasty. Just because something is a conspiracy doesn't necessarily mean it's untrue. I'm Mike with List 25, and the following 25 conspiracy theories were all too crazy to be true. Until they weren't. But before we get started, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell. Uh, it, it's not a conspiracy theory. It actually does help the channel, so <laughs> I'd appreciate that. With all that being said, let's go get conspiracy-sated. Conspirical? Conspir? Conspir? Let's conspire! Nope. Oh, these sounds so much better in my head. I'll just start the intro. Twenty-five. The government wants to beam secret messages into your brain. It's the granddaddy of all conspiracy theories. The government is beaming secret messages into your brain to control your thinking. It's the kind of strange allegation that would get you labeled as neurotic if you dared to mention it. No, oh, just ask Donald Friedman, a guy who in 2003 requested that exact information from the FBI. He was declared mentally ill by his psychiatrist as well as the government. But here's the thing. He was kind of right. In a 2006 declassified Pentagon report called Bioeffects of Selected Non-Lethal Weapons, the phenomenon of microwave hearing was laid out, including how the technology in its most basic form could be used to communicate with individuals through Morse code. It might be a good idea to keep that tinfoil hat on, it might not be so absurd after all. 24. The Government Controls the News Beginning in the early 1950s, the CIA initiative known as Operation Mockingbird eavesdropped on members of the Washington Press Corps. They paid journalists to disseminate CIA propaganda as part of this program, wiretapped their phones, and monitored their workspaces to keep tabs on their daily operations and visitors' behavior. The CIA also went so far as to pay students in cultural organizations and magazines to act as front groups. Senate hearings in the mid-1970s finally exposed the covert initiative. 23. The Dalai Lama works for the CIA. The Dalai Lama can always be found smiling. Some have wondered if his smiles have to do with the fact that he earned a six-figure salary from the U.S. government in the 1960s. As per declassified intelligence reports, he earned $180,000 as part of the CIA's funding of the Tibetan resistance at a sweet $1.7 million per year. The objective behind these payments was to interfere with and destabilize China's infrastructure. In 1998, the Dalai Lama's administration admitted to receiving these monies from the CIA. 22. The government is making us ill. No, I'm not talking about COVID. Yet. However, there might be something to that conspiracy theory too. As early as 1932, the U.S. Public Health Service collaborated with the Tuskegee Institute on a phony syphilis treatment program. The experiment, which involved lying to over 400 African-American men with syphilis, was only scheduled to last six months at first. However, it took until 1972 for the public to become aware of the research, at which point the government was forced to terminate the experiment. For 40 years, the 400 men were frequently given harmful drugs and subjected to painful and unneeded medical procedures in the name of medicine. Despite the fact that penicillin became a known cure for syphilis, Researchers hid this information from patients in order to keep the experiment going. 21. The government uses our dead bodies for experiments. Conspiracy theories can be highly entertaining. Until they turn out to be true. Following the nuclear bombings in Japan, the US launched a large study to assess the impact of nuclear fallout on the human body. To do this, the government stole dead bodies. Yes, the dead bodies of babies and young children. The main reason was that they needed young tissue. So they enlisted a global network of agents to locate recently deceased newborns and children, and then retrieve samples, sometimes even limbs, without notifying or obtaining consent from the hundreds of grieving families. 20. The government poisoned alcohol during prohibition in order to discourage drinking. Alcohol producers have been combining their products with dangerous chemicals for a long time. However, between 1926 and 1933, the federal government pushed manufacturers to add higher doses of these chemicals to their products to deter bootleggers from turning the liquor into moonshine. Unfortunately, that did not discourage the bootleggers or those who bought their goods. By the end of Prohibition, over 10,000 Americans had died due to tainted liquor. 19. 
The world's richest and most powerful men have a retreat where they decide the fate of the world. Some of the world's most influential and wealthiest men congregate at a California campground for two weeks of heavy drinking, top secret discussions, and bizarre rituals every July. Visitors to the Bohemian Grove retreat have included renowned corporate leaders, U.S. presidents, artists, and oil tycoons. It's said that participants are not permitted to conduct business there. Still, there has been an exception or two, most notably in 1942 for the Manhattan Project, when the discussions and approvals led to the development of the atomic bomb. 18. The President's Wife Ran the Country The President, or the First Lady in question, was Edith Wilson. President Wilson had a crippling stroke near the conclusion of his presidency, but the government felt it was in the country's best interest to keep, you know, the news quiet. As such, his wife, Edith Wilson, made the vast majority of executive decisions for several months. Despite Mrs. Wilson's claim that she simply served as a steward, historians who have studied the Wilson presidency concur that Mrs. Wilson was essentially president for much over a year and that she didn't do too badly. 17. The government wants to control our minds. The 1950s were a scary time for U.S. citizens. The government grappled with communist spies as the Cold War was heating up and those in power decided that drastic measures were in order. It was during this time that Project MKUltra was born. In order to find a truth serum, the CIA decided to secretly inject unwitting U.S. and Canadian individuals with LSD and then interrogate and occasionally torture the subjects. The CIA reimbursed hospitals, jails, and colleges for cooperation and silence. In 1973, CIA Director Richard Helms ordered the destruction of all MKUltra-related records, and while the plot was finally exposed, no one participating in the operation remembered the specifics. 16. The FBI tried to discredit American political groups it deemed subversive. From the CIA to the FBI. When the FBI wasn't investigating crimes, the Bureau, led by J. Edgar Hoover, spent most of its time trying to keep communism from spreading in the U.S. The FBI hounded various political groups, such as the Civil Rights Movement, through a secret program known as Quintelpro, Counterintelligence Program. Dr. Martin Luther King was public enemy number one. Agents bugged his hotel rooms, stalked him, attempted to break up his marriage, and even wrote him an anonymous letter pushing him to commit suicide at one point. 15. The government spied on John Lennon. Crazy celebrity conspiracy theories are always entertaining, and this one was quite true. In the same way as many other counterculture heroes, John Lennon was seen as a threat. To fuel the fire, his anti-war songs like Give Peace a Chance didn't endear him to the Nixon administration. The FBI decided to place Lennon under surveillance in 1971, and the Immigration and Naturalization Service attempted to deport him a year later. I won't discuss the conspiracy theories surrounding his assassination just yet. 14. The government makes use of hitmen. Following the Watergate crisis in 1975, Senator Frank Church helped establish the predecessor of the U.S. Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. Known as the Church Committee, their objective was to investigate the CIA and FBI to guarantee they were working within the law. The committee swiftly determined that the CIA had essentially gone into the hitman business. In addition to assassinating Mossadegh and Allende in Iran, the CIA also killed revolutionaries and rebel leaders in Central and South America, the Middle East, and Africa. They disguised their murders as car crashes, suicides, diseases, and heart attacks. 13. The government is using social media to spy on you. Unfortunately, this one is 100% true. Thanks to the Twitter files, we also know they can find themselves in delicate situations if they meddle too much. The Electronic Frontier Foundation, or EFF, is a nonprofit that advises the public on all online safety matters and defends civil liberties in the digital world. Thanks to their efforts, we know how many user data requests our government agencies send to the most prominent platforms every year. In 2016 alone, there were over 49,868 requests for data to Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook, 9,076 to Apple, and 27,850 to Google. 12. Tobacco Company's New Smoking Gave Cancer During the 80s, it would have been almost impossible to find an action movie where the main character didn't have a cigarette hanging out of his mouth for 60% of the duration. Many believe the rising cancers of the throat, mouth, and lungs could be attributed to cigarettes. In fact, although research showed an undeniable statistical link between lung cancer and smoking as early as the 1950s, it wasn't until the late 90s that Philip Morris, the nation's largest cigarette manufacturer at the time, officially confirmed that smoking could cause cancer. 
11. The government lies to us. Today we know this is virtually always true, and never more so than on August 2nd, 1964, when they manipulated the Gulf of Tonkin incident, which led to full US involvement in the Vietnam War. The facts surrounding the North Vietnamese attack on the American naval ship Maddox were already hazy by the time news of the alleged strike reached American shores. Since then, declassified intelligence documents have revealed that the Maddox provided support for South Vietnamese attacks on a nearby island, and the North Vietnamese responded in kind. 10. Canada developed a gaydar machine. The truth is often stranger than fiction. It really happened. The Canadian government employed a university professor in the 60s to create a method for detecting homosexuality in the federal workforce. He invented a device that detected pupil dilation in response to same-sex erotic pictures. The Canadian government used the results obtained from the device to fire over 400 men from public service, the Mounties, and the military. 9. U.S. military leaders had a plan to kill innocent people and blame it all on Cuba. Unfortunately, such a scheme existed. Operation Northwoods was a deliberate strategy to carry out terrorist acts on U.S. soil. If it doesn't sound bad enough, the plans were approved by the CIA, the Department of Defense, the Pentagon's top brass, and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. If carried out, it would have resulted in the murder of hundreds of innocent individuals to convince the public to support a war against Cuba. The organization even contemplated blowing up a U.S. ship and kidnapping planes as a false pretext for war. Fortunately, John F. Kennedy, president at the time, stopped the planned action. 8. A fake testimony to influence a war. In 1990, in the months running up to the Gulf War, a young girl, known only as Naira, testified about Iraqi crimes before the Congressional Human Rights Caucus. She told several tall tales about how the invading Iraqis treated Kuwaitis, horrifying Congress members. Although many people died due to Iraq's invasion, her statement was 100% made up. She was the ambassador's daughter to the United States, and her statement was part of a public relations campaign named Citizens for a Free Kuwait, organized by the public relations firm Hill and Knowlton. 7. John Wilkes Booth Didn't Act Alone According to popular belief, actor John Wilkes Booth assassinated President Lincoln on his own inside Ford's theater. However, Booth conspired with no fewer than nine additional co-conspirators, including Mary Surratt, the first woman hanged by the U.S. government. One of the co-conspirators includes George Astorot, who failed in his assassination attempt on Vice President Andrew Johnson. Meanwhile, co-conspirator Lewis Powell also tried to assassinate Secretary of State William Seward, wounding him badly. 6. The U.S. government employed Nazi scientists after World War II. Following Germany's surrender in World War II, over 1,600 Nazi scientists were sent to work in the U.S. In 1946, the scheme, known as Operation Paperclip, was exposed to the media, most notably in the New York Times. Some of these researchers worked on Project MKUltra. Werner von Braun was a well-known former Nazi participant in this program. He made his mark in the U.S. by being part of the moon landing and designing the Jupiter-C rocket that launched America's first satellite. He also became a director within the Development Operations Division of the Army Ballistic Missile Agency. 5. The Government Has a Heart Attack Gun This entry probably should have been right after the CIA hitmen, but we felt it needed to shine independently. The CIA revealed their secret weapon capable of causing fatal heart attacks in 1975. It works by firing a little poison dart through clothing, leaving nothing except a tiny red dot on the skin. The dart disintegrates on impact, leaving just a little sting comparable to an insect bite. An autopsy can't reveal the toxin since it deteriorates too fast. As a result, the CIA can carry out assassinations that can not be linked to them. Lovely. 4. The government can control your mood. Unfortunately, this conspiracy theory, which also turned out to be true, redefines the term make love not war. One of the non-lethal compounds explored by the U.S. Defense Department to disrupt enemy morale and discipline was the Gay Bomb. The 1994 study aimed to develop a weapon that would douse opposing troops in female pheromones. The goal was to make soldiers sexually attracted to one another, which would reduce their fighting efficiency. However, it was never pursued. Or so they say. 3. The government can control the weather. Yes, your government can manipulate the weather to some extent, anyway. During the war in Vietnam, the CIA would seed the clouds to increase the amount of rain during the monsoon season. 
According to the CIA, this technique was used between 1967 and 1972 to wash off roads and cause destructive landslides, preventing North Vietnamese troops from moving their weapons and supplies. 2. The Russians don't really have Hitler's skull. For decades, it was assumed that Hitler committed suicide after World War II. Still, many conspiracy theorists believed it was a sham and that he had slipped away at the last moment. Hitler's skull fragment obtained from the bunker where he supposedly died was in the possession of the Russian authorities. In 2009, Russian authorities conducted testing on the skull fragment. The alarming findings revealed that the skull fragment belonged to a young woman, not a man. Ironically, the tests were conducted to undermine the credibility of the conspiracy theorists claiming he had gone into hiding. 1. The government knows where the aliens are. Our government has been fascinated by UFOs for a long time, despite years of denial, and even had a program looking for UFOs as late as 2011. The five-year Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program gathered video and audio evidence of UFOs and built storage facilities to store any alien objects. While the Pentagon denies that such efforts are still taking place, the program's director, Luis Elizondo, claims they are. And if today's list has taught us anything, we'd rather believe Lewis's slip of the tongue than the Pentagon's denial. So, what are some of your favorite conspiracy theories? And you know what, bonus points if they ended up coming true. <laughs> Let us know in the comments below, and like I said before, like, share, comment, subscribe, notification bell, do all that fun jazz, really helps us out. I promise that's not a conspiracy. There, that sounded much better. And uh, I love you guys, and as always, I'll see you next time. Or will I? Maybe it's a conspiracy. Enjoying our lists? Be sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Share them with your friends and help us consistently conciliate curiosity. And if you want even more lists, check out these videos here or just head to our website at list25.com.